Using employee retirement funds to keep the doors open. That's what's happening at a local beauty school. A whistleblower asked eyewitness news to investigate the 401k situation at Milan Institute in downtown Bakersfield. Jeff Platt got his hands on documents proving the school was keeping their employees retirement money and found out it's entirely illegal. Jeff. You know, Dave Rochelle, when an employee chooses to save for retirement, that's their money. They earned it. But it appears those who run the Milan Institute believe that money is a piggy bank. At Milan Institute in downtown Bakersfield, students pay thousands of dollars to be trained for beauty and massage careers. Despite the high cost, the school needs money. And according to Justin Leland at MoneyWise, they've broken the law to get it. There's a lot of different ways to handle the situation without going into stealing from your employees. Eyewitness News obtained documents showing retirement money was being taken out of employee paychecks, but Milan wasn't putting the money into employee retirement accounts. A Milan spokesman claims it was human error, but a whistleblower gave me this email from HR which says Milan withheld 401k contributions for nine months on purpose because they have a quote, very unfortunate cash flow situation. Leland, a 401k expert, tells me people could go to jail for this. Uh, the IRS deems this as being a, a loan from the, the, from the plan, and so if you are taking a loan from the plan, it is highly illegal. It's known as a prohibited transaction. Our whistleblower says employees were told not to tell the press about this problem, something the Milan spokesman says isn't true, but... We came to Milan Institute and we actually saw the director telling people not to speak to us. Also, texts from inside the school say people were directed not to speak to us, even saying they locked down the building until we left. Now, hours after we started asking questions, Milan said that they made the deposit, so we checked with our whistleblower, and today, 10 months after the first deposit should have been made, like magic, money was in the retirement account. Uh, the standard is seven days. However, it was less than it should have been, which means this is not over. Live in studio tonight, Jeff Platt, Eyewitness News. I'm supposed to get around $1,700. I took $8,000 extra on my loans. These are two of countless students at Milan Institute telling us the same story. I graduate in a month and a half. I have yet to receive or see or get any answers on where that money's at. They took extra financial aid to pay bills while in school, but the money never came and the bills went unpaid. I was going to be homeless. Um, while you were a student while, at Milan. Yes, while I was a student at Milan. How much is your family struggling right now because they're keeping your money away from you? Um, actually, we have to move because they kept our money from us. We've been evicted. Students tell me Milan is blaming the government, saying they can't give students their money until the government sends the check. But today, a Milan spokesman told me in an email, Milan must pay out this surplus to the students more than a month before the Department of Education will release the funds to the school. Today's date, 7.30. Um, 19. In this video a student gave us, it appears Milan may have faked giving students their money. They were told to sign a form saying they got their disbursement and then were handed a single dollar bill. Mm, a dollar? Yes, ma'am. Now these same students are getting hit again. Not only are they broke, they need to start paying back the loan. 285 a month. But you haven't even gotten the money that you took out with the loan? No. Out of money and out of options, these students have no choice but to finish the program at Milan in hopes that maybe it was all worth it. Hopes that no longer exist. I, I feel betrayed, I feel lied to, I feel like everything they said to get us there at the school was nothing but just that, just something to get us into that school. And once, once we became students there, that's whenever the truth came out about how the school was really ran. And tomorrow night we'll actually be speaking to students who have graduated and still have not gotten their money. In other news, tonight we continue our investigation into Milan Institute. As we learn more about their cosmetology program, we're learning the problems for students do not end at graduation. 
and they owe me like over $5,000. Brooke Mather is not enrolled in Milan Institute's cosmetology program. She already graduated and she's still waiting for her financial aid. Money the government says they already gave to the school, but Milan is telling her otherwise. They tell me that it's not in their control and they have no idea where the money is coming from and like when it is coming at all. Mather is one of many graduates who've told us they still haven't gotten their money from Milan. Where did it go? Meanwhile, other graduates are telling us they never got their education from Milan. College price education that lacked the education for the most part. So I looked into Milan's track record, specifically the cosmetology program at the Bakersfield Central Campus, and found only one in seven students is graduating on time, and one in three of those students is failing the state board exam. They didn't push us to be prepared, I guess. The reason many former students tell me they failed the test is because they were learning somewhere other than the classroom. I paid a lot for my education and I learned most of it from YouTube. So you guys trusted YouTube videos more than yeah. some of your instructors? Yes, definitely. Whether they're still waiting on money owed to them or they're still struggling to pass the test the $20,000 program was supposed to train them for, the Milan graduates I've spoken to all have the same belief about Milan. The for-profit school is all about profit and not about school. I think they just want people enrolling. They're not really caring about the students succeeding. They're just caring about the cash flow coming in. Like once you first enroll and you get the money coming in, I think that's what they care about. Now, as we continue to investigate this school, we've been in touch with the owner of Milan Institute, and we hope to have an interview with him in the coming days. In an exclusive interview with the owner and president of Milan Institute, I got to the bottom of what really happened to employees' retirement money. 500 employees, that's another issue that we've seen. Uh, payroll missed at least once recently, and according to your own records and filings that I was able to find, uh, it seems as though delaying disbursements to 401k accounts is something that's regularly happened over the last couple of years. Yes, and the 401k, which is the catalyst of this whole uh, situation, uh, that was a mistake on my part. That's why I put down human error. Oh, okay, um, I should have talked to our, our, our employees and say, hey, you know what? I need to borrow from the 401k to help with the operations of the company. What was the human error? By, by accessing that without asking them. I was uh, thinking, okay, do I really want to stress our team out by presenting? I mean, if I went to you, Jeff, hey, can I borrow from your retirement? I was thinking, is that awkward? Is that stressful? Doesn't that seem a lot better, though, than just taking it from my retirement without right. asking? Right. I agree with you now. And it was a mistake, and I've apologized to the different teams. And uh, it was a it was a mistake. I I have to I have to live with that. At the end of the day, it was entirely your doing that you needed the cash because of a cash flow situation, and so you took it. Yes, I made that mistake. Correct. Wouldn't you say that's less human error and more intentional it's action? A it's a mistake. I mean, we could talk about semantics. If, if you want to say what I wrote down was a bad choice you, and you want to compound it, that's, that's your decision. But I am t telling you, I did make that mistake. I regret it. I should have went to the employees and presented it, even though it was stressful for them. I should have done that. And we talked about it moving forward. They say, we want to know these things, Gary. Because you do understand that when you take something of someone else's without asking, that that is, by definition, stealing. No, uh, I didn't look at that at, at all. And I was uh, wanted to mention, I'm glad you brought that up, this allegations of criminal activity and fraud, that is not the case. I did talk to legal, and it is potentially, we have to do the reports. Where we've done some reports, and it, it's actually just potentially, in the worst case, a fine. So. Moving forward, though, I want to emphasize it won't happen again, and I'm admitting to that mistake. Now, you just heard Gary Yasuda, the president of Milan Institute, brush off the issue because the max penalty is a fine. However, that fine exists because what he is doing is 
illegal, just as our 401k expert and MoneyWise said before. Well, we've already shown you how the Milan Institute was unlawfully taking money from their employees, also that they've withheld money from their students. Tonight, as we continue our investigation into Milan, we take a look at the allegations of the school's salon unrightly taking money from customers. Jeff Platt is here with more on that for us. Jeff? Well, Dave Rochelle, when you pay for a service, you expect the job you asked for to be done with the products that you pay for. But many Milan cosmetology students, current and former, tell me that's not happening at the student salon. As a mantra at Milan, we tell people, have your supplies. That's Milan Institute president and owner Gary Yasuda addressing inventory issues at his school where students tell me that mantra doesn't exist because Milan isn't keeping the shelves stocked. There's times we have clients that come in and we can't do the service at the school because we don't have the product. This is where the story starts. The Milan Student Salon charges customers for a service, but the product to do the service isn't there. And then they tell you to make the product even if it's not the product? Yes. And charge full price anyway? Correct. And this isn't just one time, not just one student. Here's a few more. We were told to use conditioner instead of the actual product to mock it. I have clients where I should have lightened their hair in order to get the proper color that they wanted. And we had run out of lightener. So I was told, oh, their hair's light enough. If we don't have that product, like the deep conditioning treatment, they'll tell us, oh, um, just go get cholesterol or get regular conditioner and then, you know, act as if it's a deep conditioning treatment. I confronted Yasuda, the owner, about these accusations of fraud. They were directed by a member of the staff team to then use a completely different product to render a completely different service and charge the client anyway. Are you aware of stuff like that happening? That detail that you described doesn't sound like something we condone. So we obviously need to address that. Condoned or not, students say it's happening, and they're the ones on the bad end of it. They're asking you to commit fraud. Correct. Telling them, telling a client that it was given to them, but it's not that. Now, Yasuda admits inventory is regularly complained about in student surveys, and I've even had some employees reach out and say that they're using their personal equipment and product at the school. Yasuda blames a lot of it on turnover in their inventory office. So now as we continue to investigate Milan Institute, here's what we're doing and the results we've already seen. We're in touch with the board that gives Milan its accreditation to see if they're aware of any issues going on there. And we're looking deeper into Milan's finances. Also, we've had employees from other campuses in California and other states telling us these same issues are happening at their campus. Campuses. And according to one employee at the Bakersfield campus, students have actually left the school before the deadline to get their money back from the school. Also, we know that some employees have started to see their retirement money finally being put back into those 401k accounts. In the studio tonight, Jeff Platt, Eyewitness News.